smoke. Greetings, sisters, brothers, siblings, comrades, family. On behalf of the Labor Heritage Foundation and the Coalition of Labor Union Women, I bring you greetings and thanks for this invitation. This, um, when, I, when, I was, when I was invited to speak, I thought of immediately of Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, who was enslaved in, in the Maryland area um, where I currently live in the United States, about 17 minutes from the White House, um, had this to say when he was invited to speak on the 4th of July. The fact, ladies and gentlemen, and the distance between this platform and the slave plantation for which I escaped is considerable. And the difficulties to be overcome in getting from the latter to the former are by no means slight. That I am here today is, to me, a matter of astonishment as well as gratitude. You will not, therefore, be surprised if in what I have to say, I invince no elaborate preparation, nor grace my speech with any high sounding exodium. With little experience and with less learning, I have been able to throw my thoughts hastily and imperfectly together, trusting in your patience and generous indulgence. This, for the purpose of this celebration, is the 4th of July, is the birthday of your national independence and your political freedom. This, to you, is what Passover is the emancipated people of God. It carries your minds back and forth. But what does it mean to the Negro? I repeat, there is hope in the thought and hope is needed, but the dark clouds which lower above the horizon, the eye of the reformer has met with angry flashes pretending disastrous times, but his heart may well be lighter at the thought that America is young and that she still is in the age of impressible stage of her existence. America is no longer young and she has not kept the promise that the men who wrote the Declaration of Independence promised that was life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The fact that the majority of these men owned slaves themselves, enslaved Africans, didn't matter when they said that all men were created equal. In fact, they did not mean all men. They didn't even mean all white men. They meant all white men who owned property could vote. And so over the years, we've seen this legacy of slavery and denial continue in the United States and in the UK, and in fact, around the world. I recently reread the story of um, John Newton, uh, the man who wrote Amazing Grace. And in his thoughts on slavery, John Newton said that of the UK, which wasn't the UK then, you know, uh, but the British Empire, that if, 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 if they didn't stop this horrible crime of enslaving people, then the stain would be on the conscience of the country forever. It is on the, that stain is in the UK, that stain is in the United States. I know from meeting with other people around the world that that stain of oppressed people, people who have been targeted for whatever reason, in our country, it's the color of the skin. But we know that racism is a political construct. It has nothing to do with biology. It has nothing to do with sociology. It was created to keep the working class separated. And they'll do it based on color. They'll do it based on religion. They'll do it based on any caste to say that one group is less than the other. So that 1%, those billionaires, those royalty with money and gems and gold and oil stolen from other countries, particularly in this case, I'm pointing in Africa because that's where my ancestors came from. That they are still wielding power and still using everything they can to keep the working class divided. But we know, we know, those of us gathered here understand that together we are stronger than any of us individually. It is the concept of the United States, right? The 13 colonies came together because they figured out that if one of them was fighting the, the, uh, the British or one of them was fighting the French, it wasn't gonna work. So they all 13 came together. But the constitution of the United States wasn't so much about freeing people because you know that had to come later. It was about being business and doing business. And this part we know, the capitalists don't care where they do business. They'll do business in Asia, they'll do business in Africa, they'll do business in Europe, they'll do business in the United States, South America, the Antarctic, you know, whatever, the North Pole, if they can make money. And they will do that. And this is the thing that John Newton pointed out that he learned from a plantation owner, was they learned this. 
they had two choices, he said. They could treat the people well, clothe them and not work them to death, and they would grow old, or they could work them hard, treat them harshly, deprive them of anything they needed, and they would die at an early age, and that it was more profitable to bring more people in than was to treat them well and let them grow old. It still exists in our factories, in our countries around the world where people are being treated as slave labor. It's in the prison system in the United States. That is slave labor, that's unpaid labor. And so together, we make the difference. It takes a, a small group of committed people to recognize and not only speak to it, but to take the actions, to take to the streets, to demand that we under, receive the treatment, that all people really are created equal and that we understand that we have nothing in common with the greedy parasite because they would use us in any way, no matter what the color of the skin. They will poison us with the same toxins and pollutants that they pour into the water and the air and the earth. They don't care about color. They don't care about class. They only care about caste. They only care about the almighty pound or the almighty dollar. But I believe this with all my heart because I, I can't afford the luxury of despair. As I learned from a friend in Nicaragua when I was whining about how George Bush the first had been elected president, and we said, how do you in Nicaragua keep your spirits up? Well, you don't understand because we got this guy that's been elected a former CIA agent. And he looked at us and he said, we are not Norte Americanos. We can't afford the luxury of despair. So I learned that lesson, that we can't afford the luxury of despair. We must do everything in our power to make right that which has gone wrong and to join with other people of like mind and color and care across the world to join hands and say enough is enough because we who believe in freedom cannot rest in the name of the ancestors in the name of the first nations people on whose land stolen land i stand today in the name of our children and our children's children we will see that life liberty and the pursuit of happiness is a reality for all people not just in our own countries but around the world because none of us are free None of us are free. None of us are free if one of us is chained. None of us are free. It's a single truth we all need to see. None of us are free if one of us is chained. None of us are free. None of us, none of us, none of us. None of us, none of us, not one of us. None of us, none of us, none of us are free. None of us, none of us, none of us. None of us, none of us, not one of us, none of us, none of us, none of us are free.